Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is uh, Thursday, February the 8th. And I'm glad that you're joining us this morning. This is our uh, time of reflections. It's a time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to spend some time in prayer with the scripture, and then uh, to, to hear some uh, gleanings from based on John Wesley's sermons. So uh, I'm happy that you're joining. If you're, if you're joining us throughout the day or live, I invite you to uh, drop us a line there in the comment box. It's a great way that we can stay connected. So uh, let's, um, let's see where our text takes us today. So our reading this morning comes from the New Testament, from Paul's letter to the Romans. And we are in chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. I see Dick and Nancy have joined us this morning. Good morning. So uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through his faithfulness, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through him, and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that, we even take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us some pretty good words this morning from from paul well good morning mom glad to see you're joining us so we are focusing in on uh verse five this morning and uh we'll spend a little bit of quiet time in prayer uh between reading different translations and to to see how the translations speak to us see if god reveals something different to us as we hear his word read this morning. So uh, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we focus in on Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Let us close our eyes, breathe deeply, and try to bring in our scattered senses and focus on the presence of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 5, from the King James Version. And ho hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. From the New Revised Standard Version translation. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us.
the common English translation. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. In the New Living Translation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with God's love. from the message translation. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use our daily devotional insights uh, called Renew My Heart. And the one for today is entitled Love in the Heart. Let's hear what Wesley has to say about this topic, uh, focusing on verse 5. A third scriptural mark of those who have been, been who are born of God, and the greatest mark of all is love. It is the love of God which is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit when we are born again of the Spirit of God. Because you are my sons, St. Paul wrote to the Galatians, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, as Galatians 4, 6. By this Spirit, continually looking up to God as their reconciled and loving Father, they cry to him for their daily bread, for all things needful, whether for soul or body. They continually pour out their hearts before God, knowing that they, that <clears throat> knowing they have the, those petitions they ask of God. Their delight is in God. God is the joy of their hearts. The desire of their soul is toward God. It is the greatest satisfaction to do God's will. They love God as their Savior. They love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. There is, there are, they are so joined unto the Lord as to be one spirit. Their souls hang upon the Lord Jesus and count on him the chief among ten thousand. They know what it means of which the psalmist wrote, You are fairer than the sons of men. 
Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Psalm 45, 2. So uh, it's pretty good, pretty good words from Wesley this morning. But you know what? What kind of kind of stuck out to me in our in our text reading this morning um, was this whole concept of uh, our trials um, making us stronger. And one of the commentaries I read this morning had this to say about the, this particular passage. The key is the way we respond to the difficult trials that come our way. What must we do? What we must do is to recognize that God uses them to build into our lives perseverance, which in turn leads to character. Then we can truly rejoice in the midst of suffering, knowing that God is at work, even in those evil things that bring us a blessing. Ironically, Paul claims at the end of verse 4 that suffering can actually lead to hope. Just as resistance to a muscle strengthens, strengthens it, so challenges to our hope can strengthen it. You know, I found this interesting because I uh, sometimes I, I struggle a little bit with the the times that we're going through those trials that we face in life. But if we keep this in the back of our mind that that God can use everything in our lives for good, that God can definitely take uh, those challenges that we face and give us the strength and the perseverance to 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 get through them i think that is the thing that we need to remember that with god there is always hope and just because we're going through a time of trouble doesn't mean that our hope will be lost it's actually i think in those times where we where we struggle personally that our hope is actually strengthened because we can trust more in god so that we can trust more in God, so knowing that God, with God's help, will be will make it through it. So anyway, that's uh, that's kind of my thoughts this morning. Well, good morning, Chris. Glad to see you joined us. So we'd love to hear your your take on this text and what you make of this uh, this idea that per perseverance builds character, so that we can truly rejoice, and how hope and how suffering can actually lead to hope. Just uh, just one of those those theological concepts that we, we share sometimes. Well, let's, uh, let's get ready to take on this beautiful day. I don't know if you were able to catch the sunrise this morning, but here in Beaver Dam, it was absolutely beautiful. God's uh, handiwork was definitely on display this morning. So uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we, we have hope in you and we trust in you. And Lord, we know that when we face times of trials and troubles, that you are there with us. God, we just ask that as we go through those, those challenges of life, that we remember to focus on your presence and that you reveal yourself to us in a way through the Holy Spirit that lets us know that that you're there because God we know in our hearts that the love that you have for us will see us through anything that we can face and that is the hope that we have in our faith God, we ask you to be with all of those who are facing trials today those who who might be facing financial struggles or physical or mental or physical or mental challenges. God, we all go through times of struggle. And we all are so thankful of your your abiding love through it all. Lord, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
I hope to see you guys at the Chili Cook-Off on Saturday from 5 to 7 here at Beaver Dam. And then in worship, either at 9.30 at Rousey's or 11 o'clock at Beaver Dam. But for now, go in peace. Bye.